So it's uh, my uh, pleasure to uh, introduce uh, our uh, next speaker, uh, Dr. Uh, Zhang Liu. Uh, he uh, received uh, his PhD in electrical engineering from uh, University of Hong Kong. And then uh, he joined uh, UC Berkeley um, as a postdoctoral fellow uh, with uh, Chen Min. And uh, after uh, the, uh, the, he finished his appointment, uh, he and uh, Professor Hu and two others co-founded uh, TBA Technology, an electronic design automation uh, software company in Silicon Valley. And uh, BTA then uh, merged with uh, Ultima uh, and uh, eventually was bought out uh, by uh, Cadence. And uh, he moved to Cadence and he was there um, for a few years uh, serving as a corporate uh, vice president. And eventually, he left the company to uh, start his own company, the current company, uh, which is uh, Pro uh, Plus. With that, uh, let's welcome uh, Jean Liu. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Professor Hu. Uh, really, uh, being honored to have this chance uh, to uh, uh, to give a little talk here. Uh, like uh, many of you works with uh, Professor Hu uh, as his student, uh, of course, uh, I did too. But however, one thing more is that uh, after left Berkeley, I keep continually working for Professor Hu for another 10 years. <laughs> okay, so uh, there's a little joke. Uh, one time at Berkeley, we have a little party. Chaming always bring us out uh, for a little uh, barbecue or picnic. We had a, a function there, we play uh, baseball. You know, we separate into two teams. Uh, Chemin uh, at that time is uh, the uh, batter and the pitcher. So I, I pitched the several balls and uh, Chemin didn't catch it, okay? So somebody told me, you got to watch. <laughs> you want to work in Berkeley forever? Well, so three years, long enough. But you guess what? Another 10 years. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, let's start. So I want to uh, start with uh, this topic, the uh, topic that I selected uh, with uh, Chen Ming's uh, suggestion, because I'm now mostly uh, spending my time in China. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about China specific, but it's not really about the China. It's more what I viewed when I spent most of my time in China. So I see design in the EDA. I spent almost uh, 20 years in the past uh, working in EDA. And uh, both start uh, from a few company, a few persons company with uh, Boonking and also Chaming and Pinko. And later uh, working Cadence for another eight years, uh, running about 500 people's group. So um, accumulated some thought about uh, what EDA can do to uh, work with IC designers. So <clears throat> I want to briefly introduce about China. Everybody know about China's booming, China's great. So give you some data so that you know how great it is or how, why I'm going back to China. And also the, uh, and talk about a little bit about the, the uh, design ability and also about the, uh, what is specific in China and also the role of EDA uh, from China to the, to the world. So this is a number. And as people always said, the chart tell everything, right? So China IC market is growing steadily. So this is the number you can see starting from year 2000, 2009 all the way 2012 and then projected to, until next year. The IC demand in China keep growing. And also IC sales, which is made by China and sold by China company, is also growing. Okay. So of, of course the uh, domestic uh, IC manufacturer is not the uh, doing great in terms of the market share, but in terms of the needs of the IC product in China, it's growing very, very steadily. Another thing, okay, so if you look at the semiconductor market size, what China is really having is about constantly 30 over towards to 50%. So that means about 50% of the semiconductor consumers are in China. So, that's the reason I quit from Cadence going back to China. Okay, so however, China not yet a main IC supplier. You can see this is the top three Chinese IC manufacturer. High Silicon uh, is a full, uh, fully owned subsidiary of uh, Huawei. 
and also spectrum and uh, built by a bunch of uh, uh, returnees from, uh, from uh, US and also Huada is a purely domestic homegrown IC design company. And you compare them with Qualcomm, with Broadcom, and NVIDIA, the top three fabulous company here in the US, you can immediately see the gap. It's obvious. So that's opportunity. Design, <coughs> design capability limitation is part of the, uh, the reason. First of all, it's a lack of high-end design capability in China. So you see a lot of ICs, but their margin, their profit margin, just less than one cent. So they made a lot of IC, but like, uh, like IC cars, like, uh, like a mobile phone, like, uh, like um, uh, uh, cordless phones, and the toys, a lot. But per probably they're using some very old technology, maybe a hundred transistor building, and the very limited functions. And uh, there are some high-end uh, IC design companies, but the largely really on IP cores. Uh, they have a very limited self core IP, and their core IP creation capability is very limited. So many still playing the assembling game. People must remember China is a big country for assembly. So they assembly freezers and TVs. But a little bit different today, I heard a lot of people said that we're assembling SOC. And, uh, and the, 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 the difference, the performance, somewhat forwarded. So it's not a great news. However, the potential is huge. And the people are realizing that and improving very, very quickly, and quickly than you can imagine. <clears throat> the, uh, the reason, however, is the uh, history of design creation is relatively short in China. And uh, first of all, a lack of the necessary infrastructure, so it has a very weak CAD team or the design flow set up, not paying attention to design flow at all for many uh, chip design companies. There's really a few returnees or a few key persons, and they do not have the full uh, flow integration experience. So another very important thing is the EDA2 investment. And everybody knows EDA2 investment in China because it's mostly software. So the investment over there is not that great. Why? I don't want to mention. Okay. <laughs> and the weak knowledge about IC Foundation, um, partly, but not very limited, uh, what not, not limitedly is improved by returnees or foreign acquisitions. So the uh, country now paying atten a lot of attention to recruit people. You may heard about the Thousand Talent Recruiting Program, and also uh, the, uh, a, a lot more companies, the, they are investing and acquiring technology, people, and also companies as a whole. So <clears throat> general issues related to EDA. Uh, it does not fully understand and also utilize the PDK and the model information. So a lot of designers get the model from TSMC. Very good, very complete. But they said, well, I don't know how to use it. And they got limited keys understanding. And however, they're not using, fully utilizing the information inside. And also because they're small, their influence to suppliers, to vendors are limited. So I'm not saying they're treated differently, but the lack of the negotiation power. And also not capable to customize or improve or integrate, integrate the design flow with COT, customer owned tooling. The reason is that, as I already said, they do not have or did not pay enough attention to uh, design flow integration. Uh, mostly they buy the tool or they got the tool from somewhere and they put them and they use it. As far as now they are highly efficient, are they really talking together to each other? Uh, who is going to fill the gap if the data is not that uh, need to their needs? Very little people know how to handle that. And this has been recognized more and more by some experts in the field. <clears throat> So another thing is the limited knowledge for yield analysis. And the particularly, uh, people are just in recent years talk about the corner 
multi-corner simulations, multi-corner designs, they want to do more corners push out. But however, very few people care about Monte Carlo because the whole country is in the way that they want to move very fast. And Monte Carlo take time. You know, let's try a different run. Many, many runs. Let's see which one we had the 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 uh, the the, um, the, uh, um, the 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 luck. Okay. So another is the uh, over design, as because they have to they, they do not have enough information. So this is a problem when they and the happened earlier. For example, here in U.S., the over design problem is is there too. But however, it start to get into a problem after um, point one three, and done. But in China, even 25, even point, uh, point 0.25, of course, point one three, 90, 60, everything is over designed. So that means cost and the performance is not optimized. So a lot of money left on the table. <coughs> so, uh, Hand production yield is a problem. A lot of uh, announcements saying uh, China has some new technology, new breakthrough in chip design and so on. But you don't need to mention about the production. You don't need to mention about the yield because generally the yield is not a problem. Why? Because as long as you have one of one million past the spec, that's succeeded. As far as the production, the yield is not paying attention to. So the market competitiveness in terms of cost is not there. That is also being taken here, start to be uh, looked into right now. <clears throat> so what designers concern? Process variation are increasingly challenged today. And the information provided the foundries are not enough or not accurate. So this may not be just unique to China. Later I'm going to talk about that. And a lot of people believe that the DFY, design for yield, is must to have to achieve the performance and the yield trade-off, especially at the advanced node below 95 nanometer. And the EDA company have not yet provided integrated DFY solutions that make DFY more practical. And uh, like I said, it's not unique in China because uh, same thing happened here in US and worldwide. Uh, a year 2011 independent survey shows about 95% engineers see variation as their top priority in the next two years. And integration complexity and the geometry shrinking led to higher variation design risk. It's not the variation absolute value that getting bigger. Actually, as the performance getting, uh, as the, uh, the technology knows, get more advanced, the, um, the absolute variation is actually getting less, but the percentage of variation is getting more. The reason, of course, is more dominant by the local process variations, random process variation due to device geometry change with process, like LISO, and also another stopping fluctuation because when the device channel getting area gets so small, so little, the, uh, the irons inside actually is small number variation will change that the threshold voltage dramatically. And the worst is random. It's very difficult to actually predict what you will have in this transistor versus another one. Even they are designed identically and manufactured almost the same. So the, dear, uh, the nearby structure also affect the device in in terms of the, uh, the PLE, right? so process layout effects. So, uh, uh, so these are all put into the problem, not only by fabs, by foundries. So foundry already told you, my process is great. Just go ahead and use it. The problem is how you use it is the key. So as I mentioned, there are two types of uh, variation. One is the uh, global variation. So which means that you see the, uh, the uh, threshold voltage medium value changing from lot to lot, from wafer to wafer, from batch to batch. However, if you look at the, even on single die, you measure several different devices, identical size, 
and they are different. So this local variation is random mostly, and there are also uh, something is not random, for example, layout dependent. But however, those are really, really putting a lot of difficulties to the designers because they have to predict and also estimate this kind of random variation, how it, it is going to uh, affect their performance or their design capability. And uh, this is a chart that we always, always using to describe the uh, device performance. You know, I remember James Chen, we worked together for many years back in BPA and talk about uh, the uh, five corner. You have typical, you have fast, slow, uh, slow and fast P, slow P, fast and that type. And now you can imagine how many corners now. Every dot now is a corner and probably provided by a foundry. Depend on what type of corner. It can be leakage corner, it can be performance corner, and this and that. But this is still not enough. And some company I heard, uh, they have uh, over 400 process corner, design corners that have to run through. So corners are not enough. Some key high reliability, high failure rate component need to run Monte Carlo. So you need to look into several sigmas of this type of a global variation. And also you need to look into particular region to look into the local variation region. So sometimes you can see the local variation even grow bigger than the global variation itself. So this is the thing that gave designer a lot of headache because other than you do Monte Carlo or statistic analysis, it's almost impossible just by relay on corner. Why? Because corner do not give you the mismatch of nearby transistors. Okay, so um, this is one of the key problem. And by the way, whenever I talk about the mismatch, people immediately talk, think about analog. Unfortunately, the mismatch of peers or device is not only for analog. For example, memory, SRAM, and for uh, uh, logic, you also see the timing mismatch due to the, uh, the local variation. Another thing is, earlier we mentioned over design. I mentioned in China, over design is big, but it's not unique in China. Here, we also do a lot of over design. And the more advanced technology you work on, the more over design you're working on, most likely. So as a result, we see the, we, we see the Morse law going bended a little bit. Partially it's because our design ability is not approaching to the level that we would like, the technology potential would like to give to us. So we don't know how to dig out the potential. So there are companies who know how to do that, and who do the best, and their company mostly winning, make more, more money than those who don't know. So I'm not going to talk about the details, but you can see if you're losing, using corner versus uh, Monte Carlo, you can get a more efficient coverage and get a, a lot more margin. <coughs> Propass uh, charter to uh, do the DFI solution. I'm not doing marketing, just let people know why I'm doing this. Uh, it's funded by Chemin's team. So uh, several Carroll guys from Chemin's team. Uh, Bruce is our CTO, James, CEO. And of course, Chen Ming as our board member and early investors. Uh, we also have R&D centers in Beijing, China, Jinan, Shandong, in also in China, and Shanghai. Of course, we also have R&D center here in, in Silicon Valley. So it has been growing for the past three years. It's not uh, brand new. It's already there for three years. And our vision looking into this is that we want to go from our process, from the process information extraction the device modeling earlier, Sally mentioned about the device parameter, about device model. And uh, we go beyond just the model itself. We also want to look into how the model variation and the model can digest the uh, process variation and provide that not only one way to the designer through the simulator, but also somehow to look into how the designer can better utilize the model. Uh, put it very simple. The process, I mean the model, model parameter is not always the most accurate one. So it depends on the process, also depends on what you are looking for. And for example, low power design may look into weak inversion the best, but unfortunately, the model, basin X model as is today, still cannot fit everything perfectly. So it depends on where the design is more, uh, 
demand. So the model should be built with more attention there. For example, you may care about the GM, GDS, sometimes even look into GDS or ID to amplify the uh, weak inversion problems. And uh, in addition to that, you need to have a very fast simulator. It's spice-like, but however, the traditional spice has two problems. It is great, but however, it's built based on time domain. It means you do transient simulation. So everything you do one, it converts to another time step. But how about process variation converge? So that's a problem. Okay, when you do the local uh, truncation and the simulation, and you're actually looking into a bunch of other parameters to, to, uh, to, to vary along the, uh, the mean value. So that needs to be considered so that it can do much faster in terms of pure spice, but statistic simulation. And the next step is the key. How you can put all the yield analysis, the, the variation analysis together so that the designer can understand. Because now we talk about the device model, process, simulation, convergences. Designer doesn't care about that because they, they are not expert in this region. They know about their circuit spec. They know how their design can work better. They know how to optimize their design. So we need somehow to have a platform to translate those information into their language. So here's the core. We work on something called the nano yield that provide not only integrated, integrated with the design environment like a cadence ADE, but also we work with Monte Carlo, regular Monte Carlo, the uh, PVT corners, and also high sigma analysis. For example, that can be uh, used for five, six sigma for like a low power SRAM design so that you can do more efficient uh, simulation analysis. And of course, you need to have a, a GUI design friend and that the, uh, the current ED company may not provide or may not provide uh, enough and of course, the foundation is that you should have a distributed, distributable engine that can run on the cloud. So you can run many, many of them in parallel. The, the beauty of this is the statistical simulation or multivariate analysis, they're uncorrelated. So you can parallel them as many as you want. You don't need to worry about how to, how to put them together. Very, very efficient. And uh, one particular thing is about the high sigma. And uh, high sigma, of course, is always talk about the high reliability and talk about the low failure rate. And the, most of the we're talking about uh, like SRAM, like a repetitive design um, patterns. And uh, the problem is when you go to higher sigma, like a five sigma or six sigma, regular Monte Carlo will require about, uh, about six billion sampling. That means almost equivalent to six billion of a uh, spy simulation. Let's say SRAM cell is only six transistor or 12. Let's say six. So that's runtime, not talking about the temperature, just talk about the process, uh, low, uh, statistical uh, parameter variations. That can take uh, months to finish if you really want to run Monte Carlo. Of course, in reality, it will be even longer because you will have more than six transistors. However, if you change your sampling scheme and predict the most important regions, so-called important sampling, then you can reduce the sampling number from billions to only thousands. And that can reduce the simulation time from 100 days to only less than a minutes. So the key, of course, is how you decide where is the simple, where is important. You can be completely wrong. So those means technology know-how. And uh, this is a real case analysis. Um, so you can see uh, this is a real utilized for a uh, one megabyte SRAM yield prediction, and uh, using the tool, and you can do it in uh, in just less than um, maybe uh, one minutes. So the speed up is huge. It's about uh, 10 million times faster than traditional simulation. Okay, so uh, I told my story. This is the last one. Um, 
Thank you. Thank you.